Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli back out here in the shop, and we're going to continue today with part two of the Ultimate Crankbait series. Um, this is one of those lures, it's also called a plug, right? A crankbait or a plug. This is one of those lures that you have to have in your arsenal. Um, a crankbait is a diving lipped bait, and a crankbait has the ability, this is very unique, this is why a crankbait's so good. A crankbait has the ability to catch fish that are actively feeding and to also catch fish that aren't actively feeding. It has the ability to create a reaction strike, which is what you want. You want a lure that forces the fish to bite it because the odds of you Timing it to where you're always fishing for actively feeding fish, that's not going to happen. You're going to have windows of feeding, but more often than not, you're going to be fishing for fish that aren't really hungry and you have to make them bite. Guess what? A build plug, a crankbait has the ability to make fish react. The other thing we talked about in the first part of this series was wobble. And wobble, that bait's movement, is so critical to picking the right crankbait. You heard us talk about the three categories, tight wobble, moderate wobble, and wide wobble. And we went over the ins and outs of when to use each one. In today's part, we're gonna be flushing this crankbait out a little further. We're gonna be talking about picking the right size and color. And when I'm talking about size, I'm talking about the actual physical size. But more important than that, I'm talking about the depth that the crankbait dives, right? So size as far as body size and diving depth. And then of course, we're gonna talk about color because color is an important factor in any bait, but certainly in crankbait fishing, okay? Last but not least, when we're done with that, we're gonna be talking about retrieve. Because even if you've heard before that a crankbait's a dummy lure, all you have to do is throw it out and reel it in, it's not that easy. And we're gonna pin down a few retrieves and one big factor that's gonna help you catch more fish when you're cranking. Uh, let's start with the color and size, and that's a big one for me. And man, if you're a, a longtime follower, if you've been watching uh, other series here on our YouTube channel, you know that my ultimate reason that I pick size and color is match to hatch. Match the hatch, which means I'm going to pick a size and a color of crankbait based on what the fish are feeding on naturally in the environment. When you really lay it out, you know, you can sort of group the forage base into three distinct categories. And that's what I do with my crankbaits, right? Fish are going to feed on crustaceans. Fish are gonna feed on crawfish and crustaceans that live on the bottom. And when they're feeding on crawfish, I want a crankbait that mimics a crawfish color, right? My browns, uh, my beiges, my tans, my reds, right? The bright reds, especially in the spring. And with the color, I also want to mimic the size of those crawfish. Man, it's, it's easy. Like, you can research it at home, on the web. What, what size crawfish live in Lake X? When you get there, before you launch your boat, before you launch your kayak, if you're walking the bank, turn over some rocks. Look in the, look in the water and really try to dial in the size of that crawfish colored crankbait to the size of the crawfish that you see. In a lot of places, those crawfish are 
two inches to three or four inches. So that gives you a good idea of the body size. Category number two in my crankbait color and size selection is bait fish forage, right? Bait fish forage. This is a lot bigger category than the crawfish and the crustaceans, but you could lump things like shiners, shad, owlwife, herring, minnows, stickleback, smelt. All those forage have a very similar color pattern, right? You see whites and silvers and pearls, right? Do you see a, a pearlescent shine to a lot of those different forage species? Some with a little bluish gray back, some with a silver back, some with a yellow belly or a yellow throat, right? So I really try to dial in that color based on that forage. If it's bait fish, I want to know what bait fish it is. I want to really dial in that color. Is it gizzard shad? Is it herring? Right? And dial in the color. I also want to dial in the size because mimicking a threadfin shad, which most of them are, you know, one to three inches, is a lot different profile than mimicking a small gizzard shad, right? You can see the difference. So, so in color and body size, my number two category is bait fish. All right, last but not least, and I've got a couple here, I'll open up another one too, is my panfish category. And it's actually a little broader than panfish. But now we're talking about sunfish, bluegill, warmouth, sunnies, uh, shell cracker, and I'll even start to put yellow perch, rock bass in that category. And for that category, that's where I'm really gonna start picking my chartreuses, my yellows, right? Olives, my olive backs. If you notice, a lot of these colors now start to put orange in the throat. There's my yellow perch patterns coming in. There's my sunfish patterns coming in. So, you know, same thing with, with these baits, right? Are your panfish young of the year panfish? Do you need a really small body? Or are they year old, two year old panfish, right? So we're also matching the body size. So color selection doesn't have to be crazy. Three general categories. You don't need 50 colors. Have a category to mimic crawfish, bait fish, and panfish, and you're good. My second criteria on color, we talked about color and size for forage match. My second criteria on color and size is water clarity. And this one's real simple. This isn't a dissertation. You ready? It goes like this. The clearer the water, the smaller the bait, and the more natural the color. If you're in crystal clear, you know, super clean water, a smaller bait with a more natural finish is the deal. The opposite is true if you're in dirty water. If you're in dirty water, right? It's that big, big profile bait. I want a brighter color, dirty water, low light, chartreuse, bright chartreuse. Look at that. Blue back, bright blue, right? I want a brighter color, and I generally want a larger bait, right? Clean water, more natural color. Dirty water, brighter color, and a larger profile. That's a good general to help you also pick the right color. All right, size, color. Let's get to the meat and potatoes here, and it's retrieve. Retrieve of the crankbait, how we're gonna fish that bait. Um, on this one, instead of breaking it down to every single retrieve, I really wanna talk about it more in terms of 
the key thing you have to do every time you fish that crankbait. So when you're crankbait fishing, there's two scenarios that are gonna happen. And in each one, this retrieve key, this, this, this key piece of information, it's gonna help you catch more fish, okay? Here's the two crankbait scenarios on a retrieve. You throw that crankbait out there and you hit something when you throw it out. You hit a piece of cover or you hit the bottom. Scenario number one. You throw the crankbait out and you hit something with it. Scenario number two, you throw that crankbait out in open water where there's no cover. You throw that crankbait out in water that you're not hitting the bottom, most of the time on purpose. I'll talk about that in a second. And it just comes through. You're not hitting anything. But in each case, we want to retrieve that crankbait so it changes direction. That's all. I don't care if you cast that plug out there and you just slowly reel it. Or you cast it out there and you wind it middle of the road. Or you cast it out there and you burn it as fast as you can. They all work. But on every cast you make, whether you're hitting something or not, you ready? Make that crankbait change direction. In all the years of crankbait fishing, it's the biggest key, besides wobble, the biggest key to retrieve is to make the crankbait change direction. All right, so when you're hitting stuff, man, it's easy to make the crankbait change direction. You wanna know why it's easy? Because the object you're hitting is making it change direction. If you throw out there and there's a lay down log on an angle and you throw it out there and that crankbait hits the log, what's it gonna do? It's gonna tunk, the bill's gonna act as a, as a deflector, as a keel, tunk, it stalls, it floats back up, you start reeling again, what did it do? It changed direction. If you throw out there on a ledge in 18 feet of water and you got a DT20, you got one of those mega plugs and you bomb it, you throw it forever out there, and you crank it, crank it, crank it down, and you start hitting the bottom in 18 foot of water. What's that crankbait doing? You know, the bottom's not perfectly flat, right? It's got a little shell mound, maybe a little pebble, maybe a stick. Changing direction. You want to make this crankbait change direction on every cast. So when you're hitting stuff, it's easy, right? You could take a square bill, like a DT fat, uh, uh, a brat, or a DT fat, and you could fish shallow, hitting off of objects that you see. Docks, logs, pilings, uh, stumps. You're making it change direction by hitting the cover. Absolutely key. The bottom, here goes the rule. To make this crankbait change direction by hitting the bottom, pick a crankbait that runs as deep or deeper than the depth you're fishing. If you're going down the bank and your boat's sitting in 20 and you're cast into 18, you need a crankbait that runs 18 to 20 feet, right? If you're on a flat that's in eight or nine feet and your boat's in 10, you need a crankbait that runs 10 feet, as deep or deeper. By picking a crankbait that runs as deep or deeper than the water you're fishing, by default, it will hit the bottom and change direction. Last but not least, the second scenario was what if we're fishing this crankbait and we're not able to hit cover? There is no cover. There's no logs, there's no trees, there's no stumps, there's no grass, there's no cover. What if we can't hit the bottom or what if the fish are suspended? What if the fish are 
six feet down over 12 feet. They're halfway down. We want to fish it through the level of the fish. We can't hit off the bottom because that's not where the fish are at. The fish are in the middle. Doesn't matter. On every cast you make with this crankbait, I want you to make it change direction. And we're going to change direction with this crankbait with our rod and our reel, right? We're going to, we're going to make it change direction by what we do with our retrieve. So when I'm unable to hit something, the bottom or cover, and I'm fishing it through the middle of the water column, guys, I'm never going like this, look. All the way back to the boat. Nah, man. Look at some of the best crankbait fishermen out there. Van Dam, Fritz, look at it. Watch what they do. They never just do this the whole way back to the boat, never. Even when they're not hitting anything, watch, you ready? We're gonna throw that crankbait out there, we're gonna reel it, and we're gonna, we're gonna throw a pause, we're gonna reel, and we're gonna give it a little tip with our rod tip. As we reel, we're gonna change our rod positioning. Look, we're at two, we'll go down to three, back up to two, go up to one, back down to two. So we're gonna use our reel and our rod to make this crankbait change direction, even when you can't hit something. Middle of the water column, throw a pause into it. Ready, look. A pause, it stops, floats up a little, comes back. It changed direction. Reel it through the middle of the water column, we give it a little jerk. Ready, watch. Back, hits. Coming through the water column, we change the angle of our rod. Hunts a little, right? Every single cast you make, whether you're hitting a target, whether you're hitting the bottom, or whether you're reeling it through the middle of the water column, every single cast you make, make it change direction. The biggest key in crankbait fishing, in your retrieve, slow, medium, fast, however you're fishing it, every cast, make that plug change direction. Um, Man, that was a lot in the second part of the ultimate crankbait guide. We talked about color, size, and retrieve. Um, try those things. It's going to make you a better crankbait fisherman. I want you to hang in there with us because next week, we're going to talk about the rod, the reel, and the line. And this isn't one of those things where any rod, reel, or line will do. This is a specialty bait, and you need specialty tackle. So tune in next week. We're gonna be talking about the rod and reel line. Man, I hope you're enjoying this series, uh, flushing out everything there is, needs to, everything you need to know about crankbait fishing, A to Z. If you like what you're hearing, do me a favor. Mash that subscribe button. It's right there. Hit that subscribe button. Subscribe to my channel. If you're already a subscriber, tell a friend about it. Uh, we're here to have content to you every single week. Try to help you become a better angler. Hopefully we're teaching you a few things. Uh, hang in there. Next week, Rod Reel Line talking about crankbaits.